Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to Divine Legions. I'm your host, Mawana Beg. Thank you for joining us. The month of Ramadan is approaching and it is a month in which we have been emphasized that any changes that we want to make in life and our akhlaq or our etiquette, our manners, or to adopt good habits or to get rid of bad ones, any changes we want to do in our life, this is the best time. In this month, Allah has just raised everything. The raised the rewards, you know, He has made it easy for us, given us an environment where we can actually make changes. So, in view of that, there's a question that was asked before from Brother Muhammad in Los Angeles regarding spirituality. Now, it is a month in which this month that's coming up is a month in which we can truly grow spiritually, truly grow and develop ourselves in the best way possible. So just to get prepared for that, I'm going to answer the question and truly go into the subject of spirituality and spiritual growth in the next four days this week before Ramadan so that we can prepare ourselves to take advantage of this month. So I'm glad that you all are with me uh, on this show and hopefully, you know, we will be uh, able to take advantage of the month of Ramadan. Now, spirituality obviously is a subject that has to do with our spirit. And everyone in the world, every religion in the world, it deals with spirituality in its own ways. But the idea is simple that it is to make our spirit grow. Now, what does that mean? How that's achieved? The methodology, what the actual ideas behind it differs amongst different religions. Many religions view it as a part of their religion, meaning that it's a part or an obligation that has to be done or responsibility that has to be done or a choice that has to be made and we make that choice or we do that certain thing. And many religions, because of that, people who are spiritual, for example, they would go on journeys, they would go to the mountains, they'll go in caves, they will isolate themselves in order to find that peace within themselves. How does Islam view spirituality is something that I want to describe today. And what it means to grow spiritually. Now, certain terms we need to understand this. Islam in the holy book, in the divine revelation, you see there are different terms that are used. But there's no such thing that is known as spirituality as a whole essence, you know, like this is what we need to do or to concentrate on or to focus on. It's no certain thing. There's no term for spirituality in the Quran. Quran handles it from a holistic, per, you know, view. It, it gives you the, the things that are meant for it. And the reason it does that is because it's not an obligation in religion or responsibility. It's not a part of religion. It is the essence of our life. Spiritual growth is the reason we have been created, the reason we exist. Life is about this spiritual growth. That's what life is for. The purpose in life is for that. And that and the way of doing that is what we are made to do. So it's not, for example, like a prayer or fasting. It's like a tenet of Islam or it's like some sort of part of Islam. It's not. Spirituality and spiritual growth is the reason of our existence. Allah created us in order that we reach that goal for the reason that Allah is going, you know, that, that everlasting happiness, that pleasure is in this growth. Our culmination and perfection as a human being in our essence and our creation is through this growth. So it's not a part of something. It is the whole thing itself. 
That's why you don't see a term for it in the Quran. Because life has been made for this. So let us me explain how that works inside the Quran in the terms that Allah uses with. For example, when we say spirituality, where does that, what, what's the basis of that? Well, Allah speaks about our spirit and speaks about our creation and where the spirit came from. He says, فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ When he created Adam and molded him and formed him and then he blew into that mold I blew into that mold my spirit, my ruh. The word ruh is that spirit we are talking of. It is a part of our creation. We are created from two things. The mud, which is from the earth, and the ruh, the spirit, which is from God. So two things created us, we are molded of. One of the mud that pulls us towards the earth and the rue that pulls us towards the divine. And it's between these two that we live our life. Now, that is the basis of this whole idea. Now, the second term, uh, how does we do, how do we do this? What is that rule supposed to do or what are we supposed to do in this life? Allah in Islam puts the idea of spiritual growth in the form of a journey, a travel. It is a travel that one takes from one place to another. Uh, you start off somewhere and you're going somewhere. So there is a starting point, there is an ending point and there's a journey in between. Spirituality has been described like this by Allah to make it easier for us to know what this is about. It's not some vague thing that we try to find out ourselves. It is a path that Allah has created for us, told us, informed us, explained to us, described to us so that we know it clearly where and how we are headed. So let me just go back and give you some terms that are used in the Quran for this purpose uh, about the travel itself. Now, Allah uses the word hijrat or migration. Hijrat is a term that Allah uses to describe this movement. And this ayat where Allah says, وَمَيَخْرُجْ مِنْ بَيْتِهِ مُهَاجِرًا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ He said that whoever leaves their home and migrates, travels towards Allah and His Messenger. So what is this? This, this idea is that you're making a journey, you're making a, a, a travel. From where? From your house. Now here, Bayt is the environment that you recognize yourself in. You feel at home. So this metaphorically means this earth that we are used to, this life that we are used to here and moving where? Moving towards Allah. That is that spiritual movement. And between these two things and Allah describes this and tells us that this is the essence this is the reason why you're growing when Allah says about your essence he says uh, I did not create the human beings and the jinn except that they serve me willingly serve me come towards me so this is the idea of creation and the essence of our creation, the purpose. 
And it is in the form of a journey. It's in the form of a travel. So that we can now see where we start, where we end, how we get there. So here, uh, another term that's used in the Quran, and this is based on uh, our return, meaning Allah has sent us to earth, He has sent us into this life, and now we are actually going back to Him. We are returning towards Him. Spirituality is not just returning to Allah. It is returning to Allah by our own choice and free will. That's what it means. If you return to Him, if you go towards Him with your own choice, then this is growth. Otherwise, everyone is going to go before their Lord, before their Creator. Everyone, whether you believe in Him or you don't believe in Him. Whether you are willingly traveling or you're not traveling, you are going to go there. And some of you are going to be taken there. Some of you are going to go there yourself. One ayat in the Quran that says, Kullu nafsin dha'ikatul mawt thumma ilayna turja'un. Every soul shall taste death and they will be brought back to Allah. Meaning that there are some people who when they die, they won't go back to Allah. No, they will be grabbed, seized and brought back. So these are people who are going to reach Allah. They're going to reach their God, but it wasn't their choice. They will be forced to go back there and they will have to meet him. But there are others who go on their own accord. And that ayat says, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We are Allah's and to Him we return. Meaning that we willingly and by our choice are going back. We chose to make this journey. This is spirituality. This return to Allah. It is a journey. So this is another term used in the Quran. One more term I will give you that's used in the Quran is to describe the goal of the journey. And according to the goal, there you see the people who are growing and the people who are going the other way. And in that term, it's described as Iman and Kufr. So the, what is Iman? Iman is a journey towards Allah. Kufr is the journey away from Allah. Now, let me read these uh, ayat for you in regards to uh, believers. Allah says, Hudan wa rahmatan la'allahum bilika'i rabbihim yu'minun. He says that guidance and mercy because they, meaning who? They believe in the meeting with their Lord. They believe in that meeting. They see it as their goal and they're heading towards it. So these are people who are believers. Believers are those who see that they are going to meet their Lord and their Creator and they are going towards it. This is Iman. And the opposite of that is Kufr. And Allah says, well, He says, Qad. Those are in loss. Those people have lost. They are losers who deny and reject the meeting with Allah. They reject it. They deny it. They do not believe in it. So this Goal Allah said as the meeting with me. My friends, we all are going to meet Allah. This is the purpose of our creation right now. What happens after we meet is different. But right now, as we are created until now, the most important thing that's happening after our creation is that Allah is going, Allah is saying that you are going to meet me. There is an appointment we have. And we have to go and meet Allah. We have to stand before Him. And everyone is going to stand before Him. 
how we get there, what we do, that is what we want to discuss. We want to get there smiling. We want to get there and when we see Allah, we have that meeting, we are excited. We are smitten. We are looking forward and yearning for this meeting. This is a sign of faith. And the sign of kufr, as Allah speaks about certain people in Surah Juma. He says, الَّذِينَ يَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ Those who run away from Allah, those who are fleeing from Allah, they don't know that eventually, they are, those who are fleeing away from death, eventually death is going to meet them. Meaning that Allah is going to meet them. They are going to come to Allah. They don't know that. But the death is coming to them and they are going to meet Allah. They are going to meet Allah. So the fact is that we see that the importance here is a believer is someone who is heading towards Allah. This is a journey that we make by our own choice. So keep that in mind. And now let me go forward to see what we want to discuss right now today just is what and how do we do this journey? What do we do? Now obviously books have been written on this. So it's not something that we are going to cover in uh, two, three days. But I just want to give a gist of the important things that we need to concentrate on. And focus on and through that everything else is going to come about I just want to give a synopsis a summary of the whole deal so I have this hadith from Imam Radha alayhi salam and this hadith uh, is regarding Iman and Iman is this journey towards Allah by our own free choice this Iman and how do we accomplish this Iman and before I go into that journey it should be noted that faith or Iman is not something that's absolute meaning it's not like I have it or I don't have it though faith is never about that faith has degrees faith has levels so it's not about if you have faith or not it's about how much faith you have and so there are degrees that you're growing. So if the journey is towards Allah, and Allah is infinite, He is eternal. When you think, oh, what and who is Allah? He's eternal. He is infinite. Cannot be counted. So how can the journey end in a few years? Or many years? It can never end. So we are always in the process of a journey. This is our growth. This is the secret of true happiness. And the growth that comes in, all of that comes with it. So, Allah is infinite. And as the journey is infinite also. So, it is not like I have faith and that's it. I, now I can relax. It's not that, my friend. So, how do we go through these stages and how do we build that? Well, there's this hadith that I want to mention today from Imam Radha alayhi salam. And uh, then inshallah, I will go tomorrow. I will start discussing other issues that we have to deal with when it comes to faith. Four. Let's go into this hadith. It says, لا يستكمل عبد حقيقة الإيمان حتى تكون فيه خصال ثلاث. He says that a person cannot reach the reality of faith, of Iman, unless he has three things. There are three things that you need for this journey. Imam is mentioning that to us and clearing it up. Three things that you need for this journey. Without it, you cannot complete this journey. You can't go on this journey. You're just dreaming. You are just uh, assuming things. So the first thing you need is understanding in religion because religion is the map that takes you through the minefield called dunya, the world. The second thing Imam says you need, well, husnu takdir fil maisha. You need a good livelihood. You need a good lifestyle. This is also essential 
in the journey and spiritual growth. It is really a lot of people ignore this. And this is the difference now. When it comes to growth and spiritual growth in Islam, it is a balanced growth. It is not one-sided. It is not radical. It is not extremist. It is a balanced and moderate growth that actually is making you rise up. And for that, one, you need to know the map. Second, you need to have a good livelihood. You need to have a good life. And in regards to this life, we see that uh, there's a hadith from Imam Ali alayhi salam that uh, Imam Ali was asked, what is the best life of this dunya? What is the best thing in the life of this world? In this life, in the world that we're living in, what is the best thing to have, to aim for, to go for, to get? What should be our objective? What should we be getting here in terms of dunya? Not akhirat, dunya. He says uh, two things. Imam Ali mentions two things. Faqala se'atul manzil wa kathratul muhibbin. He says two things are essential in your growth. The first is having a spacious house, a big house where you live. Your house should not be small and cramped for space. It should be spacious. It is one of the best things to aim for in this life. Having it is nothing, at least aim for it. And going forward that is not a bad thing. It's not anything wrong. In fact, it is the best thing. If you have a choice, then choose this, number one. Second thing is having a lot of friends who like you. <clears throat> Two things are the best in this life. And truly, this is where you see growth happens. Spiritual growth happens when you... The, and this is essential. Imam Radha is saying it's essential for your growth. It's essential for completing your fate. Without it, your faith is not complete. So one is understanding of religion. Second is having a spacious house, a big house. And, uh, and a good livelihood. And the third thing is was sabro ala razaya. Is patience, is patience in front of difficulties, suffering and hardship. You should not be someone that when hardships come, you fold and you run away. It should be something that, that you are used to, that you can overcome, that you, if you are knocked down, doesn't matter. Get up and start fighting again. Start going forward again. So falling down is not the problem. It's the getting up part. A person who is unable to get up and who is unable to be patient in face of hardships cannot complete his fate. He will be knocked down and he'll get too scared to even move forward. These are three essential things that we mentioned. Now, yes, I know that there are questions regarding the second one, having a big house, but it is true. And there's purpose in reason and it's essential. It's purpose behind it. Because uh, let me read another hadith in regards to that. And emphasis uh, of having a big house from Imam Radha, he says, "Yambari le rajul an yuwasya ala ayalehi le Allah yatamanna o mautahu." He says that a per it is impertinent for a person to uh, make the life of the people around him spacious, give them room to grow, give them a place and a space that they can grow. And when he does that, if he doesn't do that, what happens? He says that his kids and his children are going to wish for his death. If he doesn't do that, because not letting them grow. This is the idea of that space and having that space and what that means. Now, obviously, it doesn't mean that, for example, you hoard things or you uh, become wealthy. It's not a matter of amassing wealth. No, my friends, amassing wealth 
is wrong. Uh, we have hadith that says, لا يشتمع المال إلا بخصال خمس. There's five reasons that a person accumulates wealth, amasses wealth. Five reasons. What are they? بخل شديد. Uh, it's either because that person is stingy, extremely stingy, or that he has very high hopes and huge dreams. You know, he wants to own an island or something. Or three, he is greedy. The third reason why people accumulate melt is that they are greedy. Or fourth is that they have cut themselves off from their family and relatives. Which means that they don't need to deal with anyone who's poor. So if they don't deal with poor people, uh, they don't lose their money. No one asks them for anything. And number five is that they have sacrificed their uh, akhirat for their dunya. So five reasons people amass wealth. There's no sixth reason. So if a person has a big bank balance, it's because of these five reasons. There's no other reason for it. These are the five reasons. So, when when the Imam says have a big house, it doesn't mean amass wealth. It means that when you aim for something in life, you aim for this because it creates for you a space where everyone can grow. And having a big house is one of the best things to have in this world with good friends who love you. Right? So, this is... Uh, something that comes out of it. Now, looking at this hadith, three things are essential in spiritual growth. Let me repeat that again and we'll end it for today. First thing that's essential is a good understanding in religion because religion is the map that navigates us through this life. Number two is having a uh, livelihood that is good, balanced and strong. And number three is uh, being uh, patient in the face of trials and difficulties and hardships. These are the three things that are necessary for us to journey towards Allah. I will go through the other issues that are regarding journey and uh, regarding spiritual growth from tomorrow. This was our uh, show for today. I will be ending it now. Uh, thank you for joining us. We will be taking questions online. Do like us and... Uh, do uh, subscribe and uh, we wish you the best and may Allah protect you all. This has been Divine Allegiance and I'm your host Malam Big. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.